Welcome to the School of Pharmacy at Cardiff University. I'm here today to talk to you about the MPharm degree course. My name is Dr. Alan Coslett. I'm the Director of Recruitment and Missions for the course. I myself am a pharmacist and many years ago I was trying to understand exactly what I wanted to do as a career. What I did know is I wanted to be involved in science and I wanted to be involved in helping people. I hope today through this talk be able to convince you that pharmacy is also a very good career option. So what I'm going to do in this talk is talk to you about the registration process as a pharmacist, so what is involved, the career options that you have available to you, something about our school and how we present and teach our course, and then something around the entry requirements and the admissions process that we use to choose our students. Hopefully this will help provide you with all the information that you require to make the right decision for you going forward. So how do we become a pharmacist? Well, pharmacists are part of a professional body. The overseeing body for us is the General Pharmaceutical Council, and they basically lay out the course in terms of the content that each university must teach, to then down to individual schools, how they teach it. So within this degree, we're going to cover all the scientific aspects. We're going to look at how that then relates to the clinical practice, i.e. the dealing with patients, and then think about the career options that are available. Once you've got your degree, you're then going to go on to a, a, what's called a pre-registration training year. This is a year of paid employment out in practice with an opportunity to prove to the professional body that you're capable of working as a pharmacist. So our involvement at the university is making sure our students are prepared for this year and then pass the examinations associated with this. Throughout all of this process, we're obviously also getting you ready for your career. I myself originally thought I wanted to go to industry but I've worked in hospital, I've worked in community, and now I'm an academic. So career options can change as you progress through life. And what we want to do is give you the skill set to allow you to develop into the pharmacist that you believe is right for you. Alongside this, of course, is that pharmacists, because of the nature of the work we do, there is continual development of our career in terms of the knowledge that we have, i.e. the drugs we're working with, and obviously the way we're working in a so CPD is compulsory professional development, showing that we're up to date in our area of practice, and this will be a continual process. Pharmacy students, from the very day they join us, is we get them to think about their career development. Alongside this is pharmacists are part of a professional body. Therefore, we need to instill in the students the aspects of professionalism, what that represents, that the fact that there will be a role model in society in terms of their knowledge, their experience, and therefore the expectations on them and we need to be fit to practice. So we instill in our students the, uh, the knowledge that they're representing uh, the profession, but they're also representing the university in our department. So what are we going to do? By becoming a pharmacist, you're going to hopefully have a positive aspect on many people's lives. I myself, through my own research, uh, currently involved in working with hospital pharmacists. And whilst I do not get involved day to day with patients, I know that the research I undertake allows patients to have a sustaining life. And every pharmacist doing this in whatever uh, role they're undertaking. What we're looking for is to have students who are committed, passionate and hardworking so that they too can make a difference in the future roles that they will undertake. So what roles can they undertake? Why do they undertake these various roles? Well, pharmacists are experts in many areas. We talk about pharmacy in four main areas, and that is medicinal chemistry. So the development of new chemical entities, i.e. new drug structures. We then have the aspects of the action of those drugs in the human body, trying to understand what are our targets, how these drug molecules are going to work, toxicity aspects, etc. Then once we have drugs that are going through clinical trials, we now have to think about actually using them with patients. So how we're going to convert those drugs into uh, medicinal doses forms, whether that's tablets, capsules, injections, inhalers, thinking about the uses of those, what is simplification uh, and the processes, as well as obviously the, the physical and chemical aspects. And of course, because we have the knowledge of building these medicines, we also know how to use them probably better than any other healthcare professional. Therefore, the ability to choose, supply, review and prescribe medicines is part of our, our major portfolio. The latter 
is a postgraduate qualification for pharmacists, but more and more pharmacists are being seen uh, as vital in terms of this knowledge that they hold in helping doctors and nursing colleagues in terms of choosing the right medicines, not just because of the aspects in terms of the pharmacological side of it, but obviously their cost implications, safety implications. So we're doing this in all areas of practice. So where do we go with this knowledge? Well, we can work in all different areas. The first and most commonly known area is obviously the community practice or uh, shop pharmacists. And they're obviously the traditional role of dispensing of prescriptions, making sure patients get the right medication after they've had uh, a review with the GP. But alongside that, of course, we've also got the sale and supply of medicines. So working with patients with minor ailments, talking through their illness and then choosing a suitable medicine based on the, the description and the information they provide. We can also give basic advice about the medication that they may be receiving and similarly uh, advice about their health care, lifestyle, etc. And therefore, potentially how we can help them in terms of changing their lifestyle and maybe allowing them to maybe not use some of the medication that they've been provided with. In the modern pharmacy, we're also doing what's called additional services, flu vaccinations, uh, monitoring of patients, so blood monitoring, cluster monitoring, things that maybe traditionally you would have gone to see a doctor or a GP uh, to get. Now, pharmacists open and accessible uh, are being seen as the first line of uh, processing. In Wales, we have some additional activities. Uh, looking at patients who maybe have a throat infection. Do they actually need antibiotics? Well, again, rather than go and see a doctor, they can now come to a pharmacist. The pharmacist will take a throat swab. They will analyze this on a specialized machine. Once the results are back and they compare this with the information provided with the, from the patient, there is the possibility then that this pharmacist can then prescribe antibiotics. So bypassing the doctor and speeding up the process of aiding these patients. So this minor ailments, uh, service is a growing area for pharmacists to try and ease the pressure in some areas of practice. Another major area of traditional pharmacy is that of hospital pharmacists, pharmacists involved in clinical practice. This means going to the wards, meeting with the patients, being part of the ward rounds. Here we can see in the top picture, actually robots are now part of this process. So the pharmacist, she remains at the ward, so she's part of the ward rounds. She may even run clinics in terms of meeting patients, so follow up reviews. The advantage here, of course, is that they can advise the doctors, they can be advising the patients and the nursing staff in terms of the misuse of the medication that the patient is receiving. Pharmacists, though, are not just at the front line, are you next to the patients? We're also in the background, so you can have pharmacists involved in the preparation manufacturer of medicines. So this can be specialised preparation. So in my own area, I work with patients uh, or pharmacists who work with premature babies, tiny, maybe the size of your mobile phone, uh, born early, don't have the capability of eating, so all their nutrition is fed through their veins. So we have specialised manufacturing processes to develop these medication. We're also seeing a movement of patients away from the hospitals to have their treatments at home. So we need technical support for these patients, providing their medicines in a form that they can use or the district nurse can go in and help them in terms of delivery of them. These patients will also need clinical support, so maybe review of their medication, reviewing of the treatment process. And of course, pharmacists have the ability to prescribe. It makes much more sense now to have pharmacists actually where where it's appropriate to have the prescribing ability to change prescriptions to write prescriptions, working alongside doctor colleagues. Of course, pharmacists aren't just in these two main areas. We have pharmacists in many other areas, traditional areas of the industry. So the ability to do research, clinical trials, marketing information are all areas where pharmacists, because of their ability to have knowledge in multiple areas of practice, allow us to easily find careers and be seen as valuable. Of course, like myself, there is the ability to do research and teaching, again, using my knowledge to help future pharmacists and future healthcare professionals. And then we have some new areas where pharmacists are making a new impact. So we're seeing prescribing pharmacists now in GP surgeries, uh, maybe reviewing patients. So the elderly patient who's on multiple medications may require a review of their medication. And this is best done by a pharmacist rather than a doctor who can look at and maybe remove some of those medications that may be uh, are a consequence of them seeing multiple consultants. We're also seeing pharmacists involved in accident emergency departments. 
we're very good at interacting with patients and teasing information from them about their, their illness or maybe the reason why they're in hospital. And a review of their medication maybe give us a, an indication of the likelihood of why they're there and maybe how we can go forward in their treatment. And finally, more and more patients are now going home for their treatment. So the ability to work in the primary secondary care boundary, i.e. working with hospital and then following those patients out into their homes is an important area. So we need pharmacists to go and visit patients in the home. So for all of these areas, pharmacists are going to need a variety of skills as well as scientific knowledge. And that is our role in the courses to make sure we instill that knowledge in all our students. So how do we do it? For us, we're very proud to be ranked as one of the top schools of pharmacy uh, in the country. If you look at many of the league tables, we're near the top. And at the moment, we're our top of the, the complete university guide. And that's based on choosing the right students and then having a course that's forever developing to make sure we are producing the pharmacists of the future so that you can progress in any area of practice. So where do our pharmacists go? Well, the most important thing is obviously getting onto that pre-registration year. And we're very proud of the fact that 100% of our students are in uh, full employment, i.e. Uh, taken up on that pre-registration. We've had very high success. And not only did we get success in terms of getting our students to the pre-registration year, but they also have a very high pass rate in the pre-registration exams. How do we help our students then? Well, not only can we do traditional teaching in terms of making sure we give them the knowledge and giving, showing them the skills that they require, we push our students to find out about the career options to them. So we uh, provide them with a wide range or diverse range of student placements throughout all of the years of a course, from quite simplistic ones going into a, a pharmacy environment and understanding and seeing the role of the pharmacist to more complex areas. Some of these are purely about the knowledge of pharmacy, others are about skills developments, the thing about communication, looking at how they would undertake counselling activities, and our students value these. And here we have a group of students who for the last few years have been involved in the Cardiff and Vale volunteering scheme. So they go out to the local hospitals, they're involved and engaged with uh, the patients, the nursing staff, the healthcare professionals. So they get an insight into what goes on in the healthcare areas they may go forward with in, in the future. And we're continually looking to develop placements for our students. Of course, our students don't work in isolation. No pharmacist does. So very important to us is the fact that Cardiff University has the full range of healthcare professionals. So we do uh, a range of interprofessional educational activities. Uh, alongside medical students, optometrists, and with uh, dentists. Here we can see a range of activities they may undertake. We have first year medical and pharmacy students learning about uh, basic life skills, so first aiding. Uh, we also have interactions with our students in terms of working with uh, devices, so to lung uh, function testing. So we're making sure they have the appropriate skills. They are confident in terms of their interactions with other healthcare professionals. Of course, in the background is also then the scientific aspects. Here is our, our manufacturing suite. Uh, approximately a million pound was spent on this. So I myself are involved in teaching this. So this is the sterile manufacturing. So in terms of uh, third year students, they will get a series of lectures on how to create injectable dosage forms. So we go through the theory of how to build these uh, formulations. They then go into our large teaching facility, uh, uh, laboratory environment to have a go at making these products on a small scale, uh, looking through the worksheets, how they will work in practice. And then we bring into this uh, real world environment so they can see the difficulties in making uh, these drugs. So it's not just here about the manufacturing process in terms of the physical manipulation, but also the, the validation processes, the stability aspects. How do we create a product that is safe and fit for human beings? And obviously this they value in terms of bringing real world environments uh, to them. Other students not only just have to have the knowledge, but they have to use that knowledge in difficult situations. So we assess our students in many different ways, traditional examinations, written examinations, uh, reports, workshops, seminars, etc. But we also have assessments of a different form that you may not have come across. So here we have OSCEs, Objective Structure Clinical Examinations. So here we have a, a pharmacy student. 
they're interacting with a patient. In this case, the patient will be represented by an actor. An actor has been given a, a task uh, to perform in terms of maybe an angry patient, a patient who uh, asking for drugs on behalf of someone else. And the pharmacist has to deal with this patient in the same way as they would out in practice. And you can see at the front here, is an academic who's reviewing this process. So they're reviewing not just of the words that they're using, but the way they perform. So the actual, uh, the, the confidence in terms of the situation. So we do this in all four years of our course. The, the, the students are gaining uh, the skills that they need to go forward. And obviously this is gonna be a vital skill for them as they go forward in their career. So, well, as the only school of pharmacy in Wales, we're obviously very proud uh, of the Welsh language. Members of the public who are first speakers in Welsh, when they become ill, uh, they will often want to speak to healthcare professionals in their first language. So the GPHC recognises this and therefore they're committed to us in terms of some of our teaching in the Welsh language. So the, our course is fully taught in English, but there are options there available for Welsh language students to do some of the clinical training also in Welsh that may be valuable for them leading to a, uh, to a Welsh NHS environment so they're helping patients in their own language. So what we're looking for are high quality students to join our course so that we can train and get them to the right level so that they go on and do well in their future careers. So these are typical of our numbers. So this year we're looking for 130 odd uh, students to, to join us. We're looking for the right students who have a, a scientific background, who have good communication skills and personal skills who are willing to, to push themselves going forward. So what is the entry process? Well, as many of you know, the UCAS application process is important to this aspect of going to university. We typically will recruit most of our students in the first cycle, i.e. from October through to mid-January students who are also applying to maybe medicine and using us as a backup uh, will normally come in this process together with high quality students from who just simply wish to to apply to pharmacy in terms of what we're looking for obviously we look at the academic information that's provided on UCAS form alongside this we'll be looking for a personal statement where we're looking for information about your interests in pharmacy why you chose pharmacy career any work experience and the skills or the knowledge you may gain out from it and additionally some information about you the person you know do you do sports music drama voluntary work you know think about the skills that you get from these activities and how they may help you as a pharmacist of the future in terms of your, your UCAS form obviously as I mentioned the academic information is important in terms of GCSEs the expectation is that you're doing sciences and these progress to A levels but then we're also looking at English language and mathematics uh, we're looking for re good grades because we have a, a, this experience that without these you may fail on our course in terms of the A-levels then, so we're looking for uh, predicted grades close to a uh, typical AAB offer. So for the last few years, we've been interviewing uh, three Bs and above. Uh, we need either a chemistry or biology as your first A-level, then a second science that comes from chemistry, biology, maths or physics, then a third A-level. That third of the A-level can be any other subject except general studies or critical thinking. For some students, this may be a language and we're fine with that. Actually, communication is a vital skill for pharmacists. If you're not doing A-levels, then we would obviously look at other traditional qualifications like the International Baccalaureate, looking for high quality uh, equivalents, so 34 points and then high levels in sciences. And we do look at people with other degrees and typically first class honours degree in the sciences. In terms of the total way we look at information, we believe in the process of widening access. So we look at every little bit of information that's provided to us uh, on the UCAS form. So we use contextualized admissions processing. So we're going to review uh, the background of yourself, your parent, what school you're from, what postcode you're from. We'll use any of these markers to help us make our final decision. In terms of the stepping process, so after screening the UCAS forms, those students who are suitable uh, for our course are then invited to interview. This interview will normally take place between mid-November and early April. face-to-face uh, -face interview where the students are interviewed for 30 minutes one-on-one -on -one by an academic member of staff with questions based around academic experience, knowledge of pharmacy practice and the skills that are involved, and something about the student. If you've done an EPQ on a, a healthcare related topic, let us know about it. We may pick on this to get you to, to talk and engage with us. 
Please note that we look at value-based recruitment, although not all our students go on to work for the NHS, large exposure do so, and will be exposed to the NHS environment as part of the course. Therefore, value-based recruitment that the NHS employs is important to us. So we probably will have a question around ethics uh, or dilemma that we will use as part of the interview process to help us make our final decision. So I hope I've covered all the information that you will require. If you do have any further questions about our course or the content that I've provided, then this is our email address. We also have a presence on social media, uh, including a number of videos that may supplement the information that I've provided. And I hope this information helped you. I certainly found a career in pharmacy that has helped me go forward. I know that the work I do is involved in terms of helping people, and I hope you will think this is also an opportunity for you to find a similar career. Thank you very much for your time and look forward to seeing you in the future.